This module is on what we call hidden files. Hidden files in Unix are different to hidden files in Windows, which you may be already familiar with. If you're not, it doesn't matter. Let's explain what hidden files are now. A hidden file is simply a file whose name begins with a dot, a full stop. Yes, it is possible in Unix for a file name to begin with a dot. So that's what a hidden file is. Now, what does it actually mean? Well, a hidden file is a file that is not displayed when you do a regular ls. So if you just type in ls and get a listing of files in a directory, the hidden files in that directory, in other words, the ones that begin with a dot, will not be listed. Furthermore, if you, say, use the asterisk or question mark wildcard characters, the hidden files, files that begin with a dot, will not be included in the files that are matched. So, for example, if you type in rm star, if you want to remove all the files in a given directory, that will work. Well, supposedly it will work if you have the right permissions, but the hidden files will not be removed. All the file names that begin with a dot will stay where they are. They will be ignored by the rm command. And I'm not just talking about the rm command, I'm talking about any program that uses the asterisk wildcard character, which is naturally any program that uses file names. So that's what it means to be a hidden file. That still doesn't really tell us what they're used for. Before we find that out, let's see if there's any way that we can actually find out the hidden files in any given directory. Yes, well, there is a minus A option that we can use with ls if we want to display the hidden files as well. Let me show you that. This is me in my home directory and I do an ls and I find that these are the particular files and directories in my home directory. Now those all happen to be directories but that doesn't matter for this particular discussion. Now if I do an ls space minus a then I list all, a for all, that's what the a stands for, all files not just the non-hidden ones and I get considerably more. In fact, you can see about a dozen extra files there. All of those have names that begin with a dot, including the special dot and dot dot files, which are right at the top, which I'll talk about in the next module. So I guess I've proved that such files exist and that they are hidden in the sense that they're not normally displayed using an ls, but still we don't know why I would ever want to make a file hidden. Let's have a look at that. So what is it about hidden files? Well, they're actually not special in any way at all. Any file can be a hidden file as long as you're prepared to rename that file such that it, its name begins with a dot. So I could have a regular text file and I could make it hidden just by renaming it. That doesn't make it special, that just makes it hidden. So which files would you typically want to hide? Well, they'd be files that you wouldn't be particularly interested in seeing on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Maybe they're set-and-forget type files. What we tend to find is they tend to be configuration files. There's a couple of examples of configuration files, .profile or .exrc. The first one is at my login configuration and the second one is my vi configuration. And once I've adjusted my login and vi conf configurations to the way I prefer them, then I probably don't really want to see those files again because they would just get in the way. Like I said, set and forget. I set the options that I want to have set and then I just forget about those files and continue using my shell and my vi program with those options set. So it's supposed to be a convenience thing. It's supposed to be files that you really don't want to see anymore. You certainly don't want to delete them. You just really don't aren't interested in seeing them on a day-to-day -day basis. So this convenience thing, the only problem is it actually turns out to be just as inconvenient as it is convenient because there's quite a great deal of occasions where you want to see every single file in your directory or perform some operation on every single file in your directory like perhaps back them up. You might be trying to back up all the files in your directory and you might find that you have accidentally not backed up all the hidden files simply because they were hidden. And these files are your configuration files, so they're probably files that you really do want to back up. So that can 
prove to be quite annoying sometimes. It also becomes annoying when you try and remove a directory using the rmdir command, which we'll look at in a moment. And the rmdir command requires a directory to be empty. So what you tend to do is you say, right, OK, I want to remove that directory. And you get back an error message saying that the directory is not empty. So then you go into that directory and do an rm star to remove all the files in that directory. And then you try removing the directory again. And you still get a warning message saying that the file, uh, sorry, the directory is not empty. And you go, well, how could it be, how could it have files in it? Because I just removed everything from it. And the answer is, well, it's still got hidden files in it. This can be quite annoying. Nevertheless, we don't have a great deal of say as to what these hidden files should be called. Files like .profile, we can't rename them, otherwise they won't be meaningful configuration files anymore. So for the most part, we're just stuck with them. Anyway, I wanted to let you know what they are, so you don't get surprised when you encounter a whole bunch of files one day in your directory when you do an ls-a for the first time.